Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. When you play fast-paced games like first-person shooters or racing games, then you want that it responds quickly to your input and that what you see on your monitor is smooth. A frame rate of at least 60 FPS is required to achieve both. However, it's not enough to make the game look perfectly smooth, as we will then run into this ugly issue here called tearing. Now, in this video I want to show you what is causing it, which technologies exist that try to eliminate it, and what downsides these have. So, first of all, how does an image get to our monitor? When your GPU is rendering a new frame, then it stores that in the back buffer. Once the frame has been fully rendered, the back buffer is renamed to front buffer, and the front buffer is renamed to back buffer, into which the GPU is now rendering the next frame. When it's time to send a new image to the monitor, then this will trigger a scan of the front buffer. How frequently these scans happen depends on the refresh rate of your monitor, where most of you guys will probably use one that is running at 60Hz, which means that it can display 60 different frames per second. Now, what is causing the tearing issue? This cycle where the GPU renders into the back buffer, which then gets renamed to the front buffer and the front buffer gets renamed to the back buffer, is happening independently from the refresh rate of your monitor. So these buffer swaps can happen at any time, and when they happen during a scan of the front buffer, then parts of different rendered frames get sent to the monitor as one image, and that causes the tearing. VSync is a technology that fixes this issue by simply not allowing the buffers to swap until the front buffer has been scanned. So the GPU renders the frame into the back buffer, which then becomes the front buffer, and the front buffer becomes the new back buffer into which the GPU renders the next frame. Now in this state we are waiting for the next scan of the front buffer to happen, which will send the image to the monitor. After that the buffer swap happens, the GPU renders the next image to the back buffer, and we wait for the next scan of the front buffer to happen. As a result, we get perfectly smooth motion. So why isn't everyone just using VSync then? One of the downsides of this technology is that games become less responsive, which I will show you in the input lag -like test results a bit later in this video. Another problem is that this technology only works when your GPU is able to consistently produce a frame rate that is at least as high as the refresh rate of your monitor. So if you have a 60Hz monitor, but your PC is unable to produce 60fps, then VSync will lock your frame rate to 30fps in order to ensure that there is no buffer swap happening during the scan of the front buffer. Now, if your PC is not powerful enough to maintain a frame rate that is at least as high as the refresh rate of the monitor, then Nvidia's G-Sync or AMD's FreeSync can prevent tearing by constantly changing the refresh rate of the monitor to match the frame rate that your system is able to produce. So your GPU renders a new frame into the back buffer, which then becomes the front buffer that gets scanned and sent to the monitor while the GPU is rendering the next frame into the back buffer. So when you get a frame rate of 43 FPS, then your display will refresh 43 times per second. When your frame rate increases to 51, then the display refresh rate will change to 51 Hz. So the monitor will match its display refresh rate to your frame rate in order to prevent tearing. However, this technology is only effective when your frame rate is lower than the maximum display refresh rate. So if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor that can support a maximum display refresh rate of 144Hz, then this technology can only avoid tearing for as long as your frame rate is lower than 144fps. If you play at a frame rate that is higher than the maximum display refresh rate, then you will get tearing, unless you use VSync. Which is why most owners of such a monitor appear to limit the frame rate slightly below the maximum refresh rate of the monitor to avoid that they get tearing at very high frame rates. A quite big downside of Nvidia's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync is that they do not work with every GPU or monitor. So if you want to avoid tearing by using one of these technologies, then you must check if your GPU and monitor support it, and that can be quite expensive, especially when it comes to G-Sync. Sadly, I do not own the required hardware to provide you with input lag results for either of these technologies. However, tests that others did suggest that they add very little additional delay when compared to running the game at the same frame rate without G or FreeSync. So far we could choose to either live with the tearing issue, enable VSync which decreases the responsiveness of the game, or invest in G or FreeSync which is only effective when your frame rate is lower than the maximum display refresh rate of your monitor. But from Nvidia we now got an additional option to avoid the tearing issue. It's called FastSync and you can enable it inside the NVIDIA control panel for specific applications only, or set it as default for all applications. 
Just like VSync, FastSync is only effective when your frame rate is higher than the refresh rate of your monitor. But unlike VSync, FastSync does not limit your frame rate to the refresh rate of the monitor, and it achieves that by adding an additional buffer. So the GPU renders a new frame into the back buffer, which then gets renamed to the last rendered buffer. And the last rendered buffer becomes the back buffer, into which the GPU renders the next frame. Once that is done, the buffers change their names again, and so we have an image in the front buffer and the last rendered buffer, while the GPU renders the next frame into the back buffer. Once the GPU finished rendering the image into the back buffer, it will then become the last rendered buffer, and the GPU will render the next frame. In the meantime, there might be a scan happening in the front buffer, which then sends the image to the monitor. Once that scan is done, the last rendered buffer becomes the new front buffer, which will then wait to get scanned and sent to the monitor. So, with Nvidia's fast sync, the game engine is not slowed down as the back buffer is always available for the GPU to render to. And we do not experience any tearing since there is always a complete image stored in the front buffer for the scan. Fast sync works with any monitor. However, it requires a GPU that uses the Nvidia Maxwell or Pascal architecture and it decreases the responsiveness of the game, but not as much as vSync does. Now, when we talk about the responsiveness of a game, then we talk about the input lag or button to pixel lag. That is how long it takes the game to show you the result of your input, like how much time there is between pressing the left mouse button and the monitor showing you the gunfire. To measure this delay, I connected the LED directly to the left mouse button of my gaming mouse. Then I pointed a high-speed camera at my monitor and recorded what happens when I press the left mouse button. Inside the recorded high-speed footage, I then look for the frame where I see that the LED lights up. And then I count the frames until I see the gunfire. I repeated that 20 times for every test scenario, which provides me with solid data for the input or button to pixel lag. I have done this test for quite a few other games in the past, like Overwatch and Battlefield. So the easiest way would have been to simply test fast sync in one of them and add that to the other results. But many of you asked for an input lag analysis of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So even though this was a lot more work, I decided that this is a good opportunity to fulfill that request, which is why I used CSGO for this test. So at a display refresh rate of 60Hz, a frame rate of 70fps and without vSync or FastSync, I measured the longest delay of 68 milliseconds, an average of 52 milliseconds and the lowest delay I measured was 39 milliseconds. When I then increased the frame rate to 120 FPS while the display was still using a refresh rate of 60 Hz, I measured delays of 56, 48 and 37 milliseconds. So when you render more frames than you can display, then this can still decrease your input lag because the game then processes your input faster. Now how about fast sync? At 70 FPS I measured delays of 79, 59 and 48 milliseconds. At 120 FPS I got 73, 57 and 44 milliseconds and at 300 FPS I measured 72, 53 and 42 milliseconds. Now how much faster or slower is vSync? In CSGO you have two different options that you can choose from. With double buffered vSync, which limits your frame rate to 60 FPS since the display refresh rate is 60 Hz, I measured very high delays of 129, 124 and 117 milliseconds. These get even higher when you use triple buffer vSync, where I measured delays of 148, 142 and 135 milliseconds. So when we compare the button to pixel lag that I measured at nearly the same frame rates, then we can clearly see that fast sync does not add much delay, while vSync significantly decreases the responsiveness of the game. I then repeated the same test at a display refresh rate of 144Hz, which also shows that frame rates higher than the display refresh rate can further decrease the input lag of the game and that fast sync adds very little additional delay compared to vSync. So the responsiveness of a game is affected by the frame rate, where higher rates mean less lag. The display refresh rate is another factor, because the higher the refresh rate, the more images the display is able to show you per second. Also you can further increase the responsiveness of a game by running it at frame rates higher than the display refresh rate, as the game will then process your input faster. And if you want the least amount of input lag, then you have to play without V, G, Free or Fast Sync. Now, vSync syncs your frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor and that way avoids tearing. It limits your frame rate to the refresh rate of the monitor. 
It works with any monitor, TV and GPU. The downside of VSync is that it adds a lot of lag as you have seen in the test results. It is only effective when your system is able to maintain a frame rate higher than the display refresh rate. And if your system is unable to maintain the required frame rate, then VSync will lock your frame rate to half the display refresh rate. AMD's FreeSync and Nvidia's G-Sync eliminate tearing by dynamically adjusting the monitor's refresh rate to match the frame rate that your system produces. They are not supported by every monitor, nor are they supported by every graphics card. If you want to use either of those technologies, then you better check the specification of your monitor and graphics card first. Both add additional input lag and they are only effective for as long as the frame rate is lower than the display refresh rate. If your frame rate is higher than the display refresh rate, then you will get tearing. Nvidia's FastSync eliminates tearing by introducing a third buffer and only sending fully rendered frames to the monitor. It does not limit your frame rate, nor does it change the refresh rate of your monitor. It works with every monitor or TV. However, it requires a graphics card that uses the Nvidia Maxwell or Pascal architecture. It does add an additional delay, but much less than VSync. And just like VSync, it's only effective when your frame rate is higher than your display refresh rate. As such, it does not replace G-Sync, which is only effective when your frame rate is lower than your display refresh rate. FastSync is actually meant to be used in combination with G-Sync, as you then avoid tearing when your frame rate is lower than the refresh rate of your monitor, as well as when it is higher than the refresh rate of your monitor. So, I have to say that I was quite surprised by the results of FastSync, as I did not expect that the delay increase would be so small. However, as I said in the beginning of this video, we do not only want that the game feels responsive. We also want that the motion that we see on our monitor is smooth. So please make sure that you switch the quality setting in the YouTube player to a 60fps stream, as otherwise you will not see the differences in the examples that I am going to show you now. So here we have Overwatch running at 60fps and we can clearly see the tearing that is happening all over the place. At 120fps we can also see the tearing quite good. But at 144 FPS, it gets to a point where I have to say that it does not bother me anymore. While when I increase the frame rate to 300 FPS, then this does not really make a big difference. Now, when I enable VSync, then we get perfectly smooth motion at the cost of more input lag. FastSync does eliminate tearing as you can see here. However, the motion is not as fluid as with VSync, as there's quite some micro stuttering going on here. When we increase the frame rate to 120, then we see the same issue here. But where things start to look really bad is when you change the frame rate to 144, as it's now unable to maintain a steady 144 FPS. It gets even worse when I change the frame rate to 300 FPS, which the system is able to handle just fine without fast sync, as I've showed you before. So, I hope that the differences are still visible after YouTube's encoding butchered the quality of this video. But what I can tell you after I've spent quite some time on testing FastSync in CSGO, Overwatch and Battlefield 4 is that all of these games show the same micro stuttering and frame rate issues at higher rates. The issues are not as bad in CSGO as they are in Overwatch and Battlefield 4, but they are still there. So if you ask me for my opinion, then right now at this time I would not use FastSync. Instead, I would aim for a steady 144 FPS as that gets the tearing issue down to a level where it does not bother me personally anymore, even on a 60Hz display. If you own a 144Hz gaming monitor and play with 144 FPS or even more, then chances are you won't notice tearing at all. FastSync is a very interesting and promising technology that we should all keep an eye on. I hope that Nvidia continues to improve FastSync because it has the potential to become the VSync successor that players will truly benefit from. The production of these videos takes a lot of time and in many cases also costs me quite some money that I have to spend on the games themselves, servers, software or hardware. But since this content is very niche, the videos generate only very little views, which means that YouTube's ad revenue does not really help to cover the costs. So if you enjoy this kind of videos where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.